How are you all doing today? Good. Thank you all very much for being with me today as we update you on what I think are two significant events. I want to start out by talking about a white collar crime as they call it. I call it a criminal. They can make it sound nice like white collar crime but I call him a thief. And here's what occurred. I was contacted by Greg Ruthven, who owns the Ruthven, it's Ruthven Enterprises, actually. And he said, hey, he said we were building some new warehousing, and they are in the warehousing business, for those of you around here know. And he said we hired a general contractor by the name of Michael Folsom. And he's not paid the subcontractors, and it's just now come to our attention. We paid Michael, Michael didn't pay them. Now I want, to, I want to underscore for just a second, there is a very well thought of, very professional construction company in this community, in the Lakeland community, called Folsom Construction. Michael broke off from his father's company. So when we talk about this, I certainly don't want to allude in any way that Folsom Construction has anything to do with this at all because they're very reputable, very professional, and Michael's father built a remarkable, remarkable business. But Michael broke off and went his own way. So this is Michael's company, construction company. We started the investigation and I personally know the Ruthven family and I've known them for decades and I had the opportunity to meet with the father of Greg Ruthven who passed away after the event occurred and I sat in his living room and he looked me in the eye and he said Grady I want you to make sure that you hold these people responsible and the sooner the better. Well, Mr. Ruthven is just a wonderful human being and I'm sorry today that with all the logistics that's involved in doing white-collar crimes, subpoenaing records, and having to show exactly where the money went, that both Mr. Ruthven and his wife passed away and didn't get to see the end result today. So it's very special to me that I was able to have my detectives work on this case for Mr. Ruthven and his company. It breaks my heart that Ms. Ruthven is no longer with us, but the apple doesn't fall far from the tree and the Ruthven family are tremendous people. And so we've got Michael in jail. We locked him up. We've charged him with, among other things, three counts of misappropriation of construction funds. We started this investigation back in 2019 when we received the information that there were a lot of subs, a lot of subs that were not paid. 
So when a first communication occurred with Michael, he said, you know, I've just had a lot of overhead and I owe about $1.4 million to the subs. And he tried to pay them back and he paid back a little money, but he didn't pay back what he should have. So once again, the Ruthvens called us, our detectives, which are simply the very best, started digging in and we saw why he had problems paying his subs. He had travel and lodging to the tune of $140,000. He purchased nine vehicles for $326,000. Meals and entertainment, $50,000. He bought two pieces of property and as I understand began a construction project on some homes in Alaska. And I'm just hitting the highlights, okay? Not, not, the de not the detail. So at the end of the day, he was living a wonderful lifestyle, but he wasn't paying the subs. He was, it was high life, fast life, expensive life, spin, 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 and he didn't pay up. Well, at the end of the day, he's locked up in the county jail. Our detectives put him in handcuffs escorted him to the county jail where he has significant charges. Well, you know, if he knows how to sing, he can now sing the Folsom Prison Blues because that's where he is. He's locked up in the county jail. So our goal is to make sure that he gets to spend time in prison because he ripped off a lot of hardworking subs who trusted him to pay he ripped off the Ruthvens who they paid their bills to the contractor and the contractor did not subsequently pay. It makes me angry, but if you have any trouble understanding what a, a thief looks like, that's a thief. But make no mistake about it, he is not he is not associated with the other Folsom Construction Company, which is simply very professionally run organization. We talk about guns and we talk about marijuana. And I've stood before this podium many, on many occasion and told you that if you buy into the fact that marijuana and cannabis is a low level nonviolent crime, that you're just misinformed. You don't understand. And that's what, a hap what happened to this case. Let me take you back. Mom and dad are at work, and 15-year-old son is at home. It's summertime. So he gets on Snapchat, and as we figured out, if, as the investigation went on, apparently he contacted an 18-year-old female from Lakeland, in an attempt to buy marijuana. So after some communication, they were, a, he was, this 15 year old child was able to talk this 18 year old girl and her 20 year old boyfriend into driving from Lakeland to Lake Wells to sell him some marijuana. So they arrive on the scene in a small silver car we later learn is a Honda Accord, a 2003 model. The 15-year-old goes up to the passenger side door because it's the female he's negotiating with and she has the marijuana. She hands him the marijuana and he says, I don't have any money. And he turns around to run. This is Bellamia Spirandio. She's 18. She's a white female. When she turns to run, 20-year-old Marshall Hayes starts shooting at the 15-year-old, shoots at him at least three times, striking him twice. Hits him in the hand, shoots him in the side, and the bullet through the side is lodged between his spinal column and the aorta of his heart. 
Deputies received from the neighbors 911 calls of shots fired in the neighborhood. Upon arrival, we find our 15-year-old child, who's certainly made a terrible judgment and error by calling up someone to bring marijuana and then trying to rip it off, shot twice. We get emergency services help for him because he's got significant injuries. But this is a success story. This is the way things ought to be. The 15-year-old's mother tells us, deputies, you take care of the crime scene here. I'll deal with my son. The son is airlifted to the hospital. Mom says, we're going to find out what this is all about. The 15-year-old initially told us a lot of different stories until mom got involved. But when mom does the right thing, or mom and dad do the right thing, the outcome is good. So mom, the, the young man, the 15-year-old, is sedated overnight. The next morning, we are feverishly and have worked around the clock to try to find out who in the world shot this 15-year-old kid. Well, when mom got involved in it, information started flowing. She worked with us, cooperated with us 100%. The detective said the reason we solved this crime as quickly as we did and got the bad people in jail was because of mom. We might have solved it, but we might not have if we'd met with what we are frequently met with was, I see nothing, I hear nothing, I say nothing, I don't cooperate. So our crime suppression team went to Bellamia Sperandio's house on South New York Avenue, where after repeated attempts to get her out of the house, she finally came out. She resisted us without violence. She didn't talk. She said, I'm from Philly, and I don't talk. I don't fold. It was her exact quote. I'm from Philly, and I don't fold. Well, that's all right. We folded her up and put her in a patrol car and took her to jail anyway. She told us a bunch of half-truths and pieces, but she never, ever admitted what really happened. Well, we determined that the boyfriend, Marshall Hayes, it was his vehicle. And Marshall Hayes, after a lot of hard work with our detectives, finally said, yeah, I drove Bellamia over to sell the dope to the 15-year-old. And when he turned and ran, I shot and hit him. Well, I shot at him. He didn't know whether he hit him or not. They fled the scene, and then they threw the gun. We recovered the gun. We found the gun. So we've got the evidence. We've got the suspects. Bellamia, at only 18, still had a juvenile pickup order outstanding for her. And she's got all kinds of criminal history, resisting arrest with violence, uh, battery on a law enforcement officer. She's only 18 years old. Marshall Hayes, who now is, the char who is charged with attempted first-degree murder and is certainly going to prison for a very long time, as he should, has virtually no criminal history, but he hooked up with a bad girl. And then when the dope deal went bad she was involved in, he shot with the intent of stopping and killing the 15-year-old kid. So don't tell me marijuana is a low-level, nonviolent crime. But for the grace of God, that 15-year-old child would have been dead today. If it hadn't been for mom, we would still be wondering who in the world shot up a 15-year-old child. Thank you, mom. You set the example of what we have to have in order to keep a community safe. And I want to thank the rest of the community. We got multiple 911 calls. You know why? In this community, 
that don't work. You don't drive into a neighborhood in Polk County and start ripping off gunshots without the community calling us and letting us know. The good news is the 15-year-old has to undergo some more surgery, but he's going to make a full recovery. Tells me that God's got plans for him because that bullet which could have gone in his spine and killed him or paralyzed him or into his aorta and he would have bled out ended up in between the two of them. By all rights, he should be dead today, but he's not, and we thank the good Lord for that. And the bad girl who's from Philly needs to know something. There's no Philly stake in the county jail. And this dude needs to know something that all men need to learn in life. Some do, some never do. You hook up with the wrong woman and do what she says, you can end up in prison for the rest of your life. And it's almost that bad to be married to one for the rest of your life that's crazy like that because even if you're not in jail, you're still in prison. All right? Any questions? You all have a good day. Talk to you later. Thank you very much. Thank you all very much. You have a question. Yes, ma'am.